Hey everyone. Yeah, the light's a little dim. You can see that. Um, but I thought I'd come on here and you see the title down below. So this is going to be a bit of spoilers. Maybe not so much. Uh, but yeah. Impact Wrestling, um, in case you guys don't know, recently has had a change behind the scenes as far as bookers and creative go and all that. And one of the people behind the scenes booking and creating is Abyss, Chris Park. Um, so you might be wondering, well, when did he start becoming part of the booking community, the committee? And I think it was as recent as Bound for Glory, even though it didn't really show that much. Um, in the Monsters Ball. I mean, it kind of showed a little bit, but I think because he was involved, it wasn't as much. Maybe he wasn't allowed to book his Monsters Ball match with Grado, and he was only allowed to, like, get some suggestions or give some ideas, you know, which is why you had a subpar Monsters Ball. In other words, not the very best they've done. Uh, but the 5150 Street Fight made up for that in a huge way. I mean, you know, just the bumps and bruises and, you know, spots that these guys did in that match made up for it. So you could tell that Chris Park Abyss booked uh, that match, uh, the way he booked that match to, um, you know, go, you know, but you could, you could tell which matches he booked and which matches he didn't. And like I said, I'm assuming that since he's also a wrestler, that sometimes he can't book certain matches the way he can't book matches he's a part of. You know, he can only make suggestions and that he can book matches and, you know, be creative with matches if he's not involved in them. So that that's what I'm assuming. Now, now the reason I bring this up and the reason the title is what you see, you see it is, uh, the reason the title is the way you know you know says what it does is because of the fact that currently one of the i guess you could say one of the hottest feuds going in impact wrestling probably one of the bright lights as far as that company goes is ove ohio versus everything now along with sammy callahan and going up against lex conan and homicide and the reason I say this is probably one of the bright lights there, because if their match at Powerful Glory, which you can definitely tell was uh, booked it creatively and by, by Abyss, by Chris Park, um, you know, if that doesn't um, tell you, you know, how much of a bright spot these guys have, especially, you know, some of the backstage um, moments that they've had, you know, backstage brawls and all that. You know, if that doesn't tell you, um, you know, that this is probably one of the positive things that this company's got going from a storyline perspective, I don't know what does. Uh, because I think if you ask around, a lot of people would say that if you need any kind of superstars, any kind of wrestlers that are perfectly fitted, are perfectly fitted, for a um, ultra violent like style of wrestling or ultra violent style of fighting and brawling, some people would say it's uh, OVE and LAX. I mean, basically these these two teams, along with Sammy Callahan and Homicide, are willing to go through any anything, are willing to be part, put their bodies through anything, willing to be part of anything that um that'll that basically in the end in the end will satisfy the fans so you know so with the announce so basically a uh, long story short uh the other day i'm looking on twitter and i noticed impact wrestling or well, someone had retweeted something from impact wrestling and it said that on the tapings that took place on the 9th of this 
month, basically three days ago, or two and a half going on three days, um, in, in Ottawa, in Ottawa, Canada, that one of the matches that was advertised for the event was Bob Wire Massacre, a six man Bob Wire Massacre. And first of all, this is historic because we haven't seen Bob Wire Massacre, Massacre in what, almost a decade? That's saying something. You know, that, you know, that's saying something to the violent nature of this match. Um, secondly, you know, secondly, it's, okay, well, historically, it's the, historically, it's the first barbed wire massacre in almost a decade. Historic, and historically, it's the first multi-person or multi-man barbed wire massacre match that we've had because Usually the last two barbed wire massacre matches we had was one-on-one -on -one matches. The first one was Abyss and Sabu. No one said that that, you know, no one, basically no one felt that it could be topped. I mean, there's an, you, there's an old saying, nothing can top the first. And I've seen the match multiple times. And I can honestly agree that nothing will top it. I mean, they tried following it up with Bob Wire Massacre uh, 2 against, with Abyss against Judas Macias, El Macias, Mil Ment Mil Ment Meltre. They tried to follow, what I'm saying is they tried to follow it up with Abyss against El Macias as Judas, when he was Judas Macias, and or as he's now known in Lucha Underground is Mil Ment Mentre's ace, if you will. You know, they tried to follow it up with that and yeah that was violent too but not as and yeah that was bloody and violent too but not on the level as Sabu and Abyss was so now you got this matchup and this pretty much from what I've read and I'm not going to give much away here because you just got to tune in obviously like I will to see it uh, this this is probably for a third barbed wire massacre and the first multi-man barbed wire massacre, uh, this was probably the most violent in a while. I think what happened is Chris Park Abyss took, along with maybe Conan having some influence, uh, because the one thing about LAX is they're supposed to be like an ultra-violent team. Like if you cross the line, you know, it's like you think they can get violent, you think they can take you to the streets, you know, you cross a certain line and it goes beyond that. So I'm guessing uh, Abyss, Chris Park, along with maybe suggestions from Conan and maybe Homicide and maybe even Sammy, for all we know, Sammy Kellyan, you know, they probably suggested, you know, letting them just go out there and go crazy. You know, just, you know, I I'm guessing that because it's the first barbed wire massacre match that, took place and you know took place live for those people at the Amadine uh, Pavilion and it's going to be aired possibly at the end of the year um the the reason the reason I'm guessing that this from what I've read that just from the spoilers that I read for it the reason this is probably turned out as violent as it did is because we haven't seen one in a while and they and to me, I think they wanted to remind people that may have stayed with the company for a while, you know, stuck with the company, go back and forth with the company, that, hey, we could still be an alternative to everybody else, and you can't see something like this anybody anywhere else. And I'm thinking they also wanted to show that by being that alternative, they can be as violent. They can be more violent than, you know, people expect them to be. And I'm, I'm just guessing, and you... If you can see the photos in the link that I provided uh, in the description, um, apparently, you know, apparently, you know, they, I guess, like I said, I guess they um, used it. Uh, I, I, again, I can't really say much without giving much away, but to me, the way they wrap those, uh, they, I mean, it, it looks like it's just a spectacle to see, and and to see the participants involved, I kind of guess gives you the clue 
that whether you want to be spoiled and you want to read the results of the tapings, go ahead. But if you're just looking at the participants involved, then you know you're going to probably be in for exactly what the name describes, a massacre. Because there are moments, I'll put it to you like this. Put it to you like this. From what was described, from what was described, and I will look it up here. I don't want to give much away. But from what was described, from what was described, um, let me see what we got here. From what was described, there was trash cans, forks, and barbed wire table. There's a moment that one of the participants, I'm not going to say who, got caught on the side of the ropes and hum and someone, correct, hold on, and someone, another, basically there's a moment where one of the participants gets caught up in the ropes and another participant or gets caught up in the barbed wire ro ropes and another participant uses a fork on their neck. One of them gets a cut on, on their back of the left of the left shoulder. One person takes a small glass bottle of tequila and poured it on the cut on the back of the shoulder. Another person sprayed the bottle in the other participant's eyes, and that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say exactly who, though you may have guessed by my me almost slipping the name, but but yeah. Basically, you kind of um, get an idea just of what's in store. And honestly, this is one of those times when a, a match gets spoiled or something like that because of tapings. It's that it's one of those matches you just have to watch and see for yourself to believe. Now, is this going to help the company? Well, apparently, whoever did the booking for Bountiful Glory, either it's a new booking team or not, uh, apparently, a lot of people have said that these past tapings have been a huge improvement over A Bound for Glory. And that this, that the booking, I guess, that we're getting here is what we should have got with Bound for Glory. Uh, there was a, a moment, uh, uh, you know, and, I, and again, I don't want to take away from what this video is about. Uh, but there is another match that people thought was good. And that was for the X Division title. That was in a taping that took place the day after on the 10th. And then there's a three-way uh, cage match for a championship uh, that's going to take place, I think, before or after Bob Wire Massacre. So, and a lot of people said that was good. There's a, so obviously, so obviously, this company and the new booking team is doing what they can to make up for the. For the BS uh, that we got with Bountiful Glory. Again, I said in my review, I thought Bountiful Glory was okay. They did a decent job, but there was just some booking decisions in there that felt that, that they shouldn't have done. And there were certain things that felt underwhelming. There were moments that you know got people's interest again, got the audience spiked up again with excitement, and then it kind of just died down. And then, of course, like I said, at the end with the main event, you know, that was good until we got to the cluster you-know-what of the event. So, so yeah, um, it looks like these tapings for Impact are making up for that. And if we're getting Bob Wire Massacre as a result of these tapings to truly make up for, you know, what we should have got somewhat with Bountiful Glory, especially like in the Monsters Ball or even more so with the 5150 Street Fight. That was good. That was good in itself. It was good in itself, but maybe could have done a lot more. Then, um, then, you know, I applaud Impact Wrestling for picking up the ball, picking up the slack and making up for the cluster you know what that apparently we got with uh, bound for glory so uh that's really all i have to say on this uh thank you all for watching live 
Uh, and thank you all for watching Post Live. Let me know what your thoughts are on the return of Bob Wire Massacre, Bob Wire Massacre 3, this time involving OVE, Sammy, Callahan, and LEX and Homicide. Let me know what you guys think down below. Hopefully, I didn't give too much away. But let me know what you guys think. Comment if you like. I'd like to hear from you guys. Uh, OTR Central, I'd like to hear from you. What's your thoughts on it? Because I think you may have enjoyed Bob Wire Massacre in the past. So this might be something you might like. Deluxe Man, I'd like to hear from you. Chase Oliver, all of you, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. And I will talk to you all later. I am out. But thank you all for watching live. And thank you all for watching post live. God bless.